So according to Buddha, what we call I or a person is basically integration of the five different parts. And these are called five khandas, five aggregates. So when we combine these five parts as a unified entity, we call it a person. And these are the followings. So one part of the physical body, four part of the mind. So physical body first. And then in terms of the four part of mind, first is cognition. The second is uh, recognition. The third is the sensations. And the fourth is the reaction to those sensations. And you put together all these five and what we call are basically a human being. Okay. So the first part is the body, right? So body is almost as if, uh, let's say there is a camera, right? So the camera is made out of the plastic and glass and different kind of stuff. The same way our body is made out of the uh, different kind of uh, bones and muscles and bloods and all these things, right? So in terms of the body, the body structure of the body is such, right? That it has five senses and it does, it is made out of some uh, elements, some earth element and some water and different elements, right? So that's the physical structure. And like the way Buddha is sort of, uh, you know, uh, dividing them, the physical structure is just the physical structure, right? For example, in terms of the physical structure of the camera is basically the plastic and the glass and all these elements. This is all the camera's physical structure is, right? If we remove all the functionality and everything, that is just the physical structure. So that is the first part. That is the one part. A sense objects, a senses, the senses and the physical structure. That is uh, the first part, the first khanda. Now the four khandas of the mind. So in terms of the mind and that second khanda is uh, the part of the mind which cognize, right? Again, it is very similar to the camera. The part of camera does not... So camera has a power of cognition, right? In terms of one sense, in terms of seeing, camera can see. Right? Camera can just see whatever you are putting in front of it. It doesn't have anything more. So just like that, the first khanda, that first thing that Buddha is separating is this, this capability of mind which is basically just cognizing. Right? You put anything in front of it. For example, you put uh, uh, a cow or you put a computer or you put a person or you put anything in front of it. It will be exactly the same for this part of the mind. It is basically cognizing. It is basically seeing shapes and colors. That's all, right? It is not really putting any label on anything. At, at this level of the mind, you're just cognizing. You're cognizing from your five senses. And they are getting registered and you're seeing like a shapes, colors, sound, these sort of stuff, right? So that part of the mind is called cognizing mind. Now, after that, uh, camera goes uh, up to that point. But now we have a next part, the third part, or the second part of the mind and the third part, third khanda altogether is there's a part of the mind which recognize, right? Which recognize what it is that I'm seeing, right? Not only just it recognize, but it has a judgment about what it is, right? If you put a person in front of you, you already know the person, you don't like the person. It has a judgment that I don't like this person, right? So then there's a third part of the mind, which is a recognizing mind. It's a judgment system, right? Fundamentally, it is going to tell whether I like it or not like it, right? On top of it, you know, you can put more layers, but on the base level layer, judges it recognizes and it judges whether i like it or not like it right anything you put in front of it uh, for example somebody says a nice words to me right somebody saying nitesh you are such a good you know you make such a nice video right it recognizes like these words on the level of my body i just you know my body has a my body has a function to register these uh, vibrations right on the level of body that is all there is right on the level of the cognition what is happening is basically I am listening to certain sound. That's all, right? I don't even know what that means. Let's say somebody said something in the Japanese to me. I don't really understand. I just listen to some, some kind of a sound, right? The recognized, poet, but the recognized mind actually understood what is these words, right? These words are the words of the praise based on its past experiences, right? It recognizes it and it says, this is good. This is nice. I like this, right? The ways, the, these are the you know, words of the praise. I like it. This is although very non-verbal. It doesn't really a verbal thing, but you will see this process somewhat unconscious. This process goes on very, very quickly in the fraction of the fraction of the second, right? And what you do and what it does, it basically gives some kind of a label to what is going on in front of you, right? Anything that, for example, the same thing, the praise, the word of the praise, it gave a label. Ultimately, it gave, 
gave it a label that I like it. This is good. I like it. Based on my past experience, I like it, right? It could be another other way around, right? Somebody says, these videos are ridiculous. You just like, you have no idea what you're talking about or whatever. So these words again came to my, you know, uh, cognition part and recognizing part recognized it and it gave a judgment that I don't like it, right? This is very, very unconscious. So we are not able to see it, but Buddha is like far more aware. So he can, you know, clearly distinguish these different parts, right? So he's saying, okay, then this happens. This recognition happens based on your past experience. This recognition is not really true, to be honest, right? The different things means different to different people, right? You put some kind of a non-vegetarian food in front of me and my mind is going to say, I really, really don't like it. You put the same food in front of somebody else, he will really, you know, he might even get saliva in his mouth, right? So this recognizing part is not really true. What it does is basically recognize based on our past experiences. That's all it does, right? What is his, What it is recognizing and his judgment is not really true or false. It's just our past experience, the culture we are born and all that, right? Based on that, it recognizes and tell me fundamentally whether this is good or not good, right? So this is the third part, the third khanda, the recognizing mind. Now the fourth khanda is this recognition, this judgment, whether it's good or not, creates a sensation in my body, right? This is this is actually experiential, right? So for example, somebody says, it is such a good video, right? Totally changed my life, right? Somebody said something like this, this part is although not very recognizable for me, this recognizing part or this judgment part that this is good, right? But it happens, in between it happens. And then what I feel, I feel certain things in my body, right? I feel my chest is opening up, right? I feel my body lighter. If I'm more sensitive, you actually feel different. You feel good, right? What he said somehow made me feel good. It made me feel good because of my recognition part, but it made me feel good, right? And you can see that again, from your body it is just some kind of a vibration in your you know auditory system then it is just the cognition of the words then there is a recognition whether this is good or not and that recognition is making me feel good or bad right that recognition is actually basically making me feel certain way some ridiculous some people somebody is uh, uh, ridiculing me somebody is saying bad things about the same video this video has no quality and this and that now the same words come to my mind, the recognition changed, right? So now I, my feeling also changed, right? My feeling is now more like my heart is, and these feelings are mostly, maybe different people might feel it differently, but, but if I exp, uh, talk from my experience, it is more like I feel certain things about, around my chest area and certain, you know, lightness and heaviness in my body, right? Especially around the chest area, especially if you want to say in your heart, right? You feel more tightness, you feel more... Uh, you know, restricted, more heavy, uh, that sort of feeling, right? So that is the fourth khanda, that is the sensation, that is the third part of the mind. And the final and fifth khanda is because of the sensation, there is a reaction starts inside ourself, right? There's a whole process of thoughts start. There's a whole process of whether I want it, I don't want it. And this all thinking, right? Such a good person that he is, I really, you know, People are beautiful and if somebody ridicule me, it's more like, you know, people are so mean, people are like this and that, people have no right to say anything. The whole reaction starts inside my mind, right? So this is the reactive part. And this reaction is looping back the judgment system, right? So whatever is my reaction is happening, I'm creating samskaras, basically what they say, right? Based on this sensation, I'm creating different samskaras and these samskaras are feeding back my judgment system. So next time when I see this person, I feel I don't like this person right you see what happened he said something that your, your videos are ridicule and i feel and my mind cognizes this is not a good word sensation happens and i feel tight and the reaction happens i don't like this person no nobody has a right to say anything like that goes back to judgment system now judgment is next time when i see this person recognition changes right this person is now my enemy this person i don't like this person anymore right this is how this whole process is working right not only that this is like i this is what uh, according to Buddha is like having this is on a very unit level this is happening on a very atomic level right and this is just like a very thin slice that we that we just cut down if you multiply the same process with like let's say million times now you will know what the restless of the mind is basically right because we have created because this is happening with everything everything that we are perceiving the judgment system is creating some kind of a judgment about this and the reaction is happening looping it back and that's why we are stuck in this kind of a loop, right? Whatever the conditioning happened in the beginning, the conditioning keeps going on. If we are not aware, 
If you are aware, we can change it. But if you are not aware, the conditioning just keeps going on, right? Somebody is very competitive in the childhood, he's going to be competitive for until he's die, right? Because this process continues, this process actually multiplies and he feels more and more competitive that way. So these are the basic khandas, these are the basic atomic parts of the mind. This is the basic atomic parts of the experience, what is going on here. How we create more and more samskara, how we create more and more, uh, you know, tightness in our body, how we create more and more uh, uh, conditioning of the mind, right? So, so this is what the, according to Buddha is five khandas and the, what Vipassana says is basically is, first of all, what Vipassana assert is look at this, right? Somebody says something nice about you. This, is there any problem in your body? Your body is going to rec recognize any kind of words that is going to be passed to the body, right? The body does, it's just like a camera. You put a camera in front, anything in front of the camera, it is going to recognize, right? Uh, the body is going to, you know, uh, uh, body is going to register these different senses, right? There's nothing wrong about it. It's going to happen whether you like it or not like it, right? Recognition will happen, right? Anything that is going to register will be recognized in the mind. That is going to happen. Whatever is your past level of samskara, your judgment is going to happen based on that. And this is so subtle that there is nothing you can do about it. On top of it, you can put some layer that no, I am this kind of a person, that kind of a person. But in the deeper layer, the judgment will continue happening based on your past experiences, right? The sensation will also happen based on that judgment. And there's nothing you can do about until this part. This sensation will happen. And based on that sensation, the reaction will happen. That reaction is up to you. Right. First of all, there is some misconception that these sensations are part, in, you know, a deeper part of the mind doesn't understand. These are very, uh, you know, impermanent sensations, right? And this is such a strong reaction to those impermanent sensations that we are creating this kind of a, a, you know, tightness at this kind of a conditioning. It's not really required, but a deeper point of mind doesn't understand that these sensations are not really permanent and this much reaction is overreaction <laughs> on this sensation, right? So the Vipassana works on this level, right? So first of all, Vipassana says, understand, actually you do not care about anything other than these sensations, basically, right? And these are like a very basic few sensations that you cannot handle. So you keep creating these samskaras, which keep creating this conditioning, different recognition, and you keep stucking in this loop, right? And you keep getting restless, right? So again, the most important thing here to understand in, from the perspective of the Vipassana is basically whether somebody is saying, something nice about you or whether you like a food or whether you like a person ultimately your sensations are going to be somewhat similar right if you like something you like like it right the sensation will be the same right so, and you actually don't like this person you don't like this food and you don't like these praise but you like a certain sensation in the body that is what you like these things are creating that sensation so it gives you this illusion that i like this person i like this food and all that but basically what you like and don't like is this sensation right? These feelings, right? That you're getting out of this thing. What you don't like and you like this feeling which <laughs> what you, what are you getting from all these different people and things, right? So Vipassana works on that level. What it says is basically that currently the thing is your automatic reactions are so strong that if as soon as you see something you will going to react based on your past experience whether you like it or not like it and that reaction will keep looping this uh, system. What you need to do is, first of all, you need to be sensitive to see that this, these, what are the different sensations you are getting when you are interacting with different objects, right? And understand that this, your attraction and aversion and your samskaras or whatever uh, these um, um, habit patterns that you are creating is based on these sensations, right? And ultimately learn to be equanimous to that sensation, right? If you learn to be equanimous to that sensation, like a magic, you will see your mind will become peaceful slowly. Like it takes time, but your mind will become ultimately very peaceful, right? Because it's not really craving and clinging to anything, anything on the level of sensation. You have a, like a very deep understanding what this thing is and what is this game of sensation is, right? So you become free and free and free. And all of a sudden, the people you used to like or hate or, you know, praise or, you know, whatever ridicule and all these things will start to neutralize, right? Will start to look like a normal thing. Right. And now you feel more lighter and happy by by your basic nature. Right. So what happens is it's something that used to bother you doesn't bother you anymore. But it's not like some kind of a magic that Vipassana is doing. Basically, it is cutting down its root. Basically, you don't care so much about different sensation in the body altogether. Right. So you just don't care about anything else so much. Right. Like somebody praise me, somebody doesn't praise me and all these kind of stuff. Right. 
So you start to become free of it. Right? And maybe in the beginning, it might seem like that this freedom seems to be fairly, what do you say, cold state. There is not so much going on. It's like, you know, I will be bored or something like that. But it is absolutely not like this, right? What, you, what happens is when you're not so much attached to the sensation or something outside or anything like that, you become extremely clear, right? You become extremely clear what is going on. And you become naturally very, you know, peaceful and happy for no reason, right? So it's a very, very interesting uh, process that Vipassana provides, like, and it's very scientific. You can see, like, how it works uh, step by step. And that way, it, you recognize, you know, you see something, you recognize the judgment happens, and then sensation happens, you stop doing any reaction, whatever the past, uh, samskara or whatever the past habit patterns you have kind of accumulated will also kind of passes away as the as you stop reacting to these things because they keeps coming into your mind and you stop reacting to those things and slowly slowly you become like a very centered and peaceful and uh, genuinely happy person <laughs>